Hi, this is your Sapna Bharti and we are here at Kirpan Cloudy Con in London and we have with us once again Bob Cullen, CEO and co-founder of Control Theory. Bob, it's great to have you back on the show. Yes, great to be here, Swapnil. Good to see you. I have known you for a very long time. You have been in different phases, but I think you keep going back to your roots of creating new companies and you're back with Control Theory. Talk a bit about, in today's world, where we assume that all the problems are solved, what problem you saw was still needed to be solved, which led to this creation. Talk about the story of the company, your co-founders, and the problem you're trying to solve. We've been doing startups for a long time. Um, this is my 12th startup. Um, the, the founders from Control3, we all worked together at Stack Engine, so, which was acquired by Oracle Cloud. And we worked together at, at Oracle Cloud building out the managed Kubernetes service there. And you know, that really taught us a lot about building out a scalable service built upon you know, CNCF uh, standards. And we see a lot of that same kind of capability happening right now with open telemetry um, in the CNCF. And being here at KubeCon, you see a lot of that innovation and the adoption of these new standards like open telemetry. Kind of what got us started is we've been in the observability space most of our careers. And we started looking at it about two years ago and kept wondering, you know, why is it so broken? There's a lot of frustration a lot of customers are feeling like they're, they're paying too much. You know, costs are spiraling out of control. There's uh, you know, telemetry's volumes are going up. Complexity's high. There's vendor lock-in. It's all sorts of uh, key issues that are creating frustration in the observability marketplace. Um, we, as we talked to more and more customers, you know, we were surprised that the costs were so high and there was so much frustration. But also, root cause analysis hasn't really gotten much better. Um, Business KPIs, the KPIs they're looking to get are really kind of hidden still. They're not getting the data they want out of it. You know, and, you know, MTTR, mean time to repair is still on the rise. So all the things you've got observability for are broken. So we, we said, there's got to be a better way. We could help fix observability. Uh, we kind of looked at, you know, what are the things that we could do? We started looking at this concept of feedback loops. And what if we put some more intelligence into the system? Uh, to actually create um, ability to adapt as you go. Because right now, observability is very brittle. One-way pipes, the kind of dumb pipes that actually dump a lot of data when you pay for the ingestion, the indexing, and the retention. So all, all that data is going in, and you're paying for all that. What if we could actually get you the data that you want, when you need it, and for whom, um, and be much more intelligent about delivering that data um, in flight without ever having to change, change what you have. So that's kind of what got us started. We were really excited about uh, the possibility of kind of adding value to the existing ecosystem of observability. Yeah, and it's, it, it's kind of cool because if you start looking at the history of observability, it came out of control theory and control systems. So observability is one part of it because that gives you external outputs that tell you how the system's behaving, but it also, its peer, its mathematical peer, is controllability. So the idea, like a thermostat, you get information, you adjust the temperature based upon the control system. So controllability is a natural peer to observability. And we thought, you know, let's really focus on that. And that's how we got the name of the company, Control Theory, and focusing on this concept of controllability for existing observability. Thanks for giving the whole, you know, kind of, you know, a story of the observability and control theory and the original name also. Talk about your co-founders. We all been together several times before. Before I mentioned Stack Engine, we were a container management and Kubernetes uh, management service um, acquired by Oracle Cloud. Um, we have uh, Eric Anderson, who's our CTO, um, Robert Gordon, who's our chief architect, and John Reeve, who's our chief product officer. So we've all worked together before. A group of us have worked previously at Copper Egg, which was a cloud monitoring company that was before Stack Engine. That was acquired by Idera. It's another successful exit. It's interesting. That was back in uh, 2012, and we were competing as Copper Egg with a small startup called Datadog. And uh, we we're going head to head with Datadog. We ended up getting acquired, and we watched Datadog really, you know, Take, take off in the marketplace, great success, a lot of innovation. Um, and I'd say that innovation has given way to like a lot of consolidation, a lot of frustration, some stagnation in the marketplace, you know, 12, 14 years later. Um, but 
um, you, you know, we, we saw that that genesis of observability and how it worked out over the last decade. Um, and prior to that, we um, worked together at Piper 9, a virtualization management company. And some of us even go back further than that to EMC and smarts and end layers. We have a long history of working together as a team. It's great to have a, you know, people you know, people you can trust. Everyone has kind of a role and responsibility. You know, we uh, work very well together. We, we, we also know each other's hot buttons. So it's a little bit about like married couple in a way. So, um, but we all get the job done and it's, it's, it's great to know, you know, who you're working with. And um, one of the things we announced here is also we got $5 million in seed funding um, as we've launched the company here. So uh, we got that from one of our key partners, Silverton, who's based in Austin, Texas also. Silverton has funded our last few companies. So it's kind of a, a nice ecosystem that we worked together before. Uh, we know each other. There's trust in the system. We kind of know how to get these kind of technologies off the ground into the market and really start helping customers solving very specific problems that are happening right now, but also helping them evolve into the future. So, You did ta talk about the problems with observability and how, but I want to go a bit detailed from the, how you are approaching it right. and where company is today and how you are trying to build the company to solve the problem. When we look at controllability, we break it down into kind of three areas, cost control, operational control, and adaptive control. Um, so, you know, the key problems you see like in cost controls, logs, and they'll start with logs. You know, everyone has log issues. You say a log spike happens, maybe a developer or someone actually put a debug level too high. So the first solution is, Let's go in and actually filter out the logs you don't need. Don't send them to, to your observability vendor and pay for that. Let's filter out those. Let's deduplicate the ones that are duplicates. Don't send those either. You have to pay for those also. The ingestion, the indexing of those. Um, we have built this concept of metametrics, which provides observability of your observability. So you know maybe where that log came from, which Kubernetes cluster, which application, what service, maybe even what developer. And if you know that, you can actually start saying, hey, that developer had actually just released a new feature. It's okay to have that debug level. Or that's a QA testing application. We, that should never be on. I'm always going to send those off to dev null. Or if it's important, I want to save it for later, I can reroute. And these are all things that we can do on top of our control plane and control theory. We can provide all these functions of deduplication, filtering, rerouting, managing logs, metrics, and traces in flight. So you don't have to pay for those, but also you get a higher signal to noise ratio. So you're able to get the, just the information you need that's important. And that's really where I think the, a, lot of, a lot of the value comes from. A, a, a huge cost issue we see a lot is uh, around custom metrics. And we can actually help customers solve this. Custom metrics are priced by cardinality. And that means the, 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 the space, the sample space you're actually in, the number of variables that go into that metric. Now, custom metrics are very important because that's your key business KPIs. And those are the most expensive thing in most observability systems, like a data dog. So if you can reduce the cardinality, you can reduce your cost by 20 and 30% at times. Um, so you may not know you're paying for this stuff. You're trying to get the best information you can, but that's the most expensive part. So reducing cardinality is another process and transformation you could do from the telemetry before it's sent off to your observability vendor. So we're sitting on this control plane and I mentioned control planes are kind of that, that pattern that we learned at, a, at Oracle Cloud about building a scalable system. So this control plane sits on top of open telemetry and the open telemetry collectors. We use the standard open telemetry collector and that can connect with any source in any destination, which is actually pretty cool. So you don't have to be using open telemetry if you are even better. Um, and a lot of people are adopting it and they want to go forward. So this provides that bridge to the future, we might say, where they can start using it now. If they're using it a lot, we help them manage fleets of systems um, and you know, really help them take their observability to this next generation. The, um, you know, another key issue we see on, as I think about this net, now next generation is AI, a lot of AI stuff going on here at the show. Um, a lot of AI observability solutions need data. They need very refined data, very specific data. And sometimes they have to go collect that data themselves. Um, so what we can do is actually provide and fit funnel the right kind of data to the AI systems. So this control plane, this data management plane can actually help AI systems going forward. So we see a lot of potential solutions today to cut costs, 
maximize results, get better root cause analysis. You know, maybe I'm going to tail sample and get just the information I need for my, my traces. It's another good, good use case. And I'm also going to be adaptive. So I'm going to start using these feedback loops to tune and auto-tune the size of my pipelines. We call that elastic telemetry pipelines. That actually helps you then scale um, and build up. If I need more information, I could build up that pipeline higher and send more data to my observability solution. Once that's over, I can actually reduce it. So once again, that's that feedback loop happening. Be smart about what you're sending. And it kind of gets back to where we started. Like we saw observability could be better. Um, we could fix some of the issues, improve it, make it better, get people more choices going forward, um, and be more open and provide more cost control. So that's really what we're trying to tap into, solve some of today's problems, solve the efficiency and the, the root cause analysis and make, make um, KPIs easier to get but also help people bridge into the future. And that's really kind of the, the excitement we see all over the show here is of people trying to figure out where they are, justify where they're going to put their resources today, but also get ready for what's next. Can you also talk about companies like you said, around one year old? Mm -hmm. old yeah, a talk bit a bit young. about you know what kind of use cases uh, you have attracted mm -hmm. and those use cases actually surprise you also yeah. that how much you were needed. Right. Well, I'll talk about a few actually that we saw here at the show where yeah, we talked to several people who have um, privacy and secure data issues in their observability and they need to mask and redact data, so they, but they can't send the data out. So what, what they end up, and they can't get the developers to you know, take out the credit card information. And also that's on the e-commerce side, credit card, you know, personal information. On the healthcare side is HIPAA information, so that's something that's secure and private. So we see both those use cases, um, actually, in people we've talked to today. They want to have their logs and their metrics filter out, redact, and mask those particular metrics. So they can actually send it off and get it into the observability solutions, um, and, but maintain governance and compliance to those. So that's a really key, key use case. Um, the other one people get excited about, more and more uh, organizations are using traces now. So for application performance monitoring. It's really kind of hard. Um, we've had metrics and logs for a while. Traces are actually um, a really great way to actually to track down application performance. But when you turn, turn traces on, you get volumes of information, um, which can be very costly and it gets spike your, your cost up. So what we can do is tail sample, which is just randomly sample or sending all your data. You might miss where the, the, the spike is or where the issue is. You could tail sample and say, I'm only going to send my most important traces off to my telemetry solution or my observability solution. Um, once again, better root cause, better cost control, better operational control all happening because of these key use cases. And these are things we see over and over again. The light bulbs go off when you talk to folks about their current, whether they're using Prometheus or Grafana, whether they're using you know, Chronosphere, whether they're using Datadog. We talk to Dynatrace and New Relic customers. So across the board, these issues are pervasive. Um, and we think there's a a great solution that takes the foundation of open telemetry, layers a control plane on top of it, that's standard, that's open, uh, that provides that controllability on top of the observability, and really helps to move the, the market forward with more intelligence and more control, so. What are the things in your pipeline that, you know, funding, growth, product development, go to market, what are the things in your pipeline for this year? I mean, we're super excited. We just, yesterday, we just launched the company we announced our $5 million of funding. We launched our new product. So we have a lot of news that we just launched. Um, and now we're really getting into now building up our customer base. We have early availability of our products. So people come to our website, controltheory.com, check us out. We got a free trial. Just you know, come in and we can actually plug right into your observability systems and take a look at it and see what we can do. Um, just the ability to understand your observability. These metametrics are, are, are mind blowing for many folks. From there, you can actually start providing a lot of great hygiene, deduplicating, filtering, et cetera. Um, so ahead of us, we see a lot of working with um, customers in particular, but also the partner ecosystem, working with open telemetry community, working with the larger vendors and helping them improve their environment. Because we want to help, you know, for a Datadog customer, we can make their environment better. We could help them adopt more solutions. We could help them bring in more data that's, that's got a higher, higher fidelity. Uh, so all those things are areas we could help the existing ecosystem. That's another area that we're working today with is talking to talking to partners, seeing how that we can um, help elevate what's going on in observability to the next level, 
because there's many challenges ahead. I think we kind of stagnated on the, the old problems and now we can actually start solving some new problems and take that next huge leap forward. And uh, we're super excited by that. Bob, once again, thank you so much for joining me and give not only share the history and story of the company, but also how you're solving this critical problem in this space. Once again, thanks for your insight and I look forward to uh, chatting with you yeah. again. Thank you. Thanks, Swapnil. That's great. Thank you. Thank you.